deuxième science même, ils sont très contents que vous êtes tous ici. D'abord, il faut qu'on parle des langues. Ich bitte euch den Arm zu heben, wenn ihr Deutsch versteht. Oi. Okay? Who speaks English? Please, please arms up. Okay. Et pour le français? Ah, let's play it. Okay. Uh, wir lassen uns, dass wir die Sprachen changer. Donc on parle toujours dans les phrases, mais à chaque phrase, donc on va, on va mixer en fait. Ce que je viens de faire, on va mettre jeder, tu mets le sens de l'autre, c'est le chier, ok Let's go et je pose mon parce que Luxembourgeois, tous les Luxembourgeois parlent aussi la langue et le français, donc on n'a pas besoin de parler aussi de Luxembourgeois. Ça ira Si vous ne comprenez pas, levez la main et on va vous donner en toutes les autres langues. Ça va Ok, alors c'est parti. Tout d'abord, un grand merci à nos sponsors, qui est la FNR. Je crois qu'il y a des personnes qui viennent venir ici aussi. Là, voilà, bonjour, bonsoir. Et surtout aussi l'UMI cette fois-ci, parce que le SLAM est en train de 10 ans de l'université. Alors, nous sommes tous les deux, nous avons fait le bonheur, c'est bien. Genau. Dann, bevor wir jetzt anfangen mit dem eigentlichen Slam, wird erst äh, Christophe Trefois, le Président de Luxor, donc qui est l'organisateur de la soirée, va dire quelques mots, juste un petit peu de mots sur Luxor. Ok, Christophe, je vous Well, I try to speak in English so that everyone understands. I'm not as skilled in languages as French, so I cannot change just from one sentence to another. Yeah, so welcome again to our site slam. I think it's the biggest, at least public event of uh, Lookstock uh, of the year. Uh, last year we had five slammers, and it was probably as packed as this year, so it's again going to be a great success. I think this year we have six, and France will tell us all about it. Um, in brief, so Luxdog is the you know association for young researchers and uh, PhD students or candidates in Luxembourg, and uh, we were founded about three years ago, and I think we have roughly 100 members now, so I think that's a pretty good uh, yeah number for two years existence. Um, in Luxembourg, there's around 500 PhD candidates from what we have gathered so far. So it, it represents about a fifth, so I think that's, that's pretty good. Um, for some of our other activities, except cultural and, and social ones, uh, we are represented on the European level through Eurodoc, which is a kind of similar association, but on the European level. And there we have uh, one or two representatives who attend also these meetings on the European level. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we try also to be active on the, <coughs> on the local uh, level, also politically, uh, in the sense that we try to talk to the ministers that are responsible for uh, research, higher education and so on, and in general we try to improve working conditions for, for PhD candidates uh, in Luxembourg. Um, so far this is our biggest group, of course uh, the association is also open for postdocs, but so far we haven't had uh, yeah, a big numbers coming from there and also not issues related to that. So if you know postdocs are one yourself and you have any issues that are not related to, I don't know, that your coffee is cold or whatever, just uh, let us know and uh, yeah, join us. Yeah, if you're not a member yet, of course, I have to say that outside I think we have forms so you can get your membership as of today and if I'm not mistaken it will carry over to 2014 so you get three months for free. Great. <laughs> okay, with that, uh, then I think we can open the science slam and yeah, have a nice evening and hope to see you soon again on one of our events. So, so welcome from my part. Maybe one thing we forgot is to introduce ourselves. That's Franz. Oh, yeah. Francois. Franz. <laughs> and I'm just basically Laura. Laura, whatever you can call me. Whatever you want. So, before we get into the matter, uh, and we let our slammers 
get to stage, I just want to quickly explain to you what a slam actually is. N'ayez pas peur, je vais aussi l'expliquer en français, mais je commence par l'anglais. Ok, ich kann einfach nicht auf Deutsch sprechen. <lacht> Wenn das okay ist, weil sonst wird es ziemlich lange dauern. Also, a slam is basically an event where young researchers uh, will present their research in a very unusual, entertaining way, hopefully. So, I can already tell you, expect the unexpected. You will be surprised. There are not really many rules besides one very important one, which is that nobody has more than 10 minutes. So after 10 minutes, you have to be done, over, no extra time. So that's basically the only rule that we have. When it comes to the presentation, they can do whatever they want, dance, scream, sing, do a poem. We are very open-minded about that. And what's great for you, audience, so you have to stay focused, <laughs> um, is you are going to afterwards judge the winner by the amount of applause you're giving. Okay, so it's rather democratic and all up to an acoustic hearing. So remember everybody and yeah. En français. Oh, do I really need to do it once again in French? No? We are good? Great. So let's start with uh, the lottery. Who will start and who will be our first slammer? Okay. Very sophisticated way. So this is the magic hat. It's really magic. Yeah. Oh, you can see it. Again. It's for those. So, it's flat. Oh. It's not over. So. Wait, I will lose it. So, we're going to introduce the names of our six slamming teams. And now we need Connie sitting outside, so we need somebody else. Maybe... Christoph? Christoph, okay. So, we're doing this twice, once before the break and once after the break. So this is for the three, three, uh, first slots. For the three premières places, we will tirer au sort. So, it's the one who will start. And the first one will be... Now in the car, I just finished it with Laura in the lift. 
So please stand it. Okay, you can sign when you start? Yeah, it's no? okay. All right. All right, it's a very good pleasure to be here, my first really social event in Luxembourg uh, with a big audience like you guys. And it's gonna be a pleasure. It has a lot to do with uh, Carnival and networks and genes and all these stuff, you know? I would like to know how many people here is expert in Alzheimer's disease. Oh my yeah. god, two or three people, all right. So I, I need the help of these three people to judge if the audience is correct or not. Tax money is about reading taxes, right? Everybody went already to uh, PubMed and made some queries, like giving a text about Alzheimer's disease or these things. And then tax mining, it just identifies for you which are the proteins that are mentioned in the literature in an automatic way. And then sometimes you need to decide the limits of the boundaries of these sentences. And then you just throw away the sentences that are not really interesting. And for those that are interesting, you just kind of process these uh, names to see if they have a meaning in between each other. And if they have a meaning, you just select them, you put in a database, you know, and then you do it for the whole 20 million abstracts on PubMed. It's a lot of things. And then at the end, you have the chance to um, create this type of graphs that will give uh, the kind of uh, association between the different words in the sentences, right? And then you can discover hidden association in the text for this node to that other node, right? It's very easy, right? Now, what I need is a tool that makes these things uh, work. For instance, you have this Pescado tool, that's a Brazilian tool. It's called Plan One for Exploration of Significant Concepts Associated to Cultures <laughs> and Relationships. So you make a query on PubMed, you put your list of identifiers here, the software works, and find those sentences that are really meaningful for people that's expert in text mining. And then you have to validate which are the nodes correct to each other, and then build a kind of uh, a network related to uh, a gene that you are interested in to study, like alpha beta, that's a central gene in Alzheimer's disease. So then uh, you have this network, and now you have to sit with the experts and validate this network. That's what you are going to do tonight, you know, in 92 slides. All right, the tool is used in the whole world, in some cities, in Brazil, in Europe, in India, uh, China, US, everywhere, people are using this tool. Uh, Berlin, Belo Horizonte, that's a city I studied. Recife is here, while Curitiba is a city I worked before. And I will prove to you that it's easier to build a network of genes for Alzheimer's disease for non-experts in comparison to a scientist to dance a Brazilian dance with a mini umbrella in hand. <laughs> so please, the three guys that are experts into text mining, uh, sorry, in Alzheimer's disease, correct with the audience is going to say if it's correct or not. How many time I have? Seven minutes. Okay, 20 slides now. Uh, this is the first association that I know that's correct, and it has a support of that sentence in the talk, right? You have uh, an automatic, I said, okay, now you have to say, is this guy right or not? Read that in the talk. And then you go for uh, 10 seconds per slide now, and then you add a new node in there, and you see if there is a meaning information there in the talk, uh, uh, a meaningful information there in the talk. It's meaningful, right? And then you go adding your next uh, nodes to this network, right? Do you read that? This is quite easy, right? Like analysis of alpha beta reliever, uh, levels of offspring generated for two separated x alpha whatever. Do something with x11 alpha whatever in there, and then you go adding to the graphs. This you don't need to do, you need to be an expert on reading, and read all that sentence and see if that sentence is going to be present or not on that node. And then you connect all that knowledge from these 20 million abstracts on PubMed to a central node that we have here, that's the alpha beta, right? So, and then we go doing this. Please, read the text. Read the text. It's quite a lot of time, you know, like, uh, the software takes only half point one second uh, sorry, 0.1 second per sentence to evaluate if the knowledge there is or not representative or something. It's very easy. Just look there and you say, all right. So I have the Saladin here. The results establish a role of Saladin and alpha beta at some point. And you just add the things into the node. Calm 1 is also there. 
in Tamil, in codes and essential components for curriculum and characterize it, cerebral chain you know, that controls off a beta levels and uh, the oxidative stress initiated by chronic uh, pre-oxidant alpha beta exposure. I mean, PRX is connected to alpha beta as well. And then you can do this for the whole sentences that the software is going to give to you. For any topic, you don't need to be an expert in the topic, and the software is just going to add the notes, the notes, and the notes. You just read these small sentences here and say, okay, this guy is connected to this. And then you just plot them in the graph. <laughs> Right? And then this is everything what's about the first part of the presentation. You read the abstracts, and the abstracts interact with the main alpha beta protein, like overexpression of base by lengthy views markedly reduced alpha beta production in primary neurons derived from Swedish mutant APP transgenic mice. And in the reading, you don't really need to be an expert in Alzheimer's disease to make a network of genes, you know, that are related to each other. And you can publish this network in databases like uh, Reactum or Keg, if you know, like the Minoru Kanegisa guy there that will let you to use his software to model this kind of, uh, you know, of knowledge. And then the end, very, you have a very interesting result to put on your, on your, uh, on your, on your paper or so, you know, I don't know, if you need like, to put a flower there or something, uh, you can just include these uh, proteins in a way that they will uh, look like more or less than the network, and you just connect, of course, here in the example that I'm showing to you, you just connect like this uh, beautiful uh, squares in yellow to that main uh, node there in the middle, right? And then you have got like at the end of reading 30 sentences only, and not 20 million abstracts. You have got like a beautiful umbrella-shaped network of genes related to Alzheimer's disease, reading only 30 sentences in the whole 20 million abstracts of them. So that's what the software is about. Do you think that this is a difficult thing for someone that's not expert in Alzheimer's disease to do? Is it difficult? No, it's not. It's, you just need to read one sentence and say, okay, these two guys, are related to each other because the software told me that it is, and then at the end, just add these nodes to my network. And this is a beautiful, validated, published, train made uh, gene networks that you just made between Trier and Ash in my one hour and 45 minutes of travel to go, and another one 45 minutes to come back home. All right, this was very easy. Now I'm going to show you something that's not really easy. I don't know how many times I had it. Two and a half. Huh? Two half. Two half. I need half an hour. Half an hour. Oh, really? so, so I need to change clothes here very briefly because now I'm going to play the Brazilian in 30 seconds. You can prepare the music there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Oh my god. How many? Two. Two. Yeah. Please play the music. <laughs> this is something like the network you just built right now, right? And this is a mood call umbrella. I have my music. Please give me another 10 seconds. Good. No, to the very end, to the very beginning, the very beginning. Louder? Louder, please. Yeah. This is very good. This is something that was
something that's difficult to do. <laughs> but all of you are able to create a non hybrid disease network. <laughs> So uh, I start thinking with a confession. This talk is being a confession. I love parasites. I'm parasitified. And actually, there's, this is worse than saying you're gay or that you love horses. And it's called. Uh, it's actually called to come out of the fume cupboard, right? But uh, yeah, I mean parasites. They're, they're pretty nasty bastards, but they are part of biodiversity as well. I mean, just like the charismatic megafauna, like tigers and whales and shit. I mean, I. I, I we don't like Wales. I do like Scotland, though. Ha ha ha! You know, and all these things have to start with a fucking bad joke. Um, good. Uh, that's uh, yeah. And also, Paris, they, they they inspire artworks. I mean, didn't Shakespeare write TB or not TB? That is the question. <laughs> Um, yeah, maybe. And uh, also, they allow you, they allow you to, to spoil boring parties. You know those parties where there are slightly too many intellectual people, there are nobody drinking, nobody does it because they have to do some work tonight. There's all these little groups of people not really talking to each other, and you just want to spoil that fucking party. You just go there. <coughs> you just go and cough everywhere. <coughs> you cough. Yeah, we really come and then just say, I'm sorry, I mean, eat my, my tuberculosis now is really, really bad. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah, you should see that expression on their face. Ha. Good, yeah, let's come to my business. Um, my PhD focuses on malaria parasites, rodent malaria parasites, and how much they invest into transmission of the disease and how much they invest into maintenance of the disease. And I will focus on three points where I think parasites are very similar to humans stress, sex, and social interaction. So let's start with stress. How does stress look like today? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's sad that stress is a, a, a pretty bad thing these days. Stress is, uh, is uh, people are stressed and blah blah blah. I mean, how this is how stress. Oh shit! I have to write an article, something like that, and uh, and then oh, you suddenly think about some dinner, right? So what do you have to do? 
Oh shit, I have to wipe this out. Oh, fuck up, you ignore that, you know? Oh, fuck, how do you admit this fucking bit? Oh, you go. Shit, I did it back to the floor. I can put it back. Oh dear. What is the fuck am I supposed to do? Oh, my, wife, my girlfriend is calling. I'm gonna go. Shit, cut it. Stop it. Oh, shit. Okay, right. I guess that. Hello, yeah, no, 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 baby, no, fuck. It's that stress, no, that's, that's self harm stress, that's what I mean. I mean, fuck the chicken, fuck everything. I don't, I'm talking about real stress, I'm talking about fucking Stone Age stress, I'm talking about, about survival, I'm talking about, you know, help fighting against the bear with a spear. <laughs> Go away, bear, hunt the fucking deer. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Now, I ask you a question. What is the least thing you think about when you're fighting a bear? Cheeks? Marshmallows? No, it's sex. What? I mean, imagine myself fighting against the bear, having a lady dinner. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I mean, I can't even do it. I can't explain my head. It doesn't work. <laughs> so, uh, the thing is, that parents let us do the same thing. If they are stressed by the immune response or the drugs, which is equivalent to the bear, or they, are, they, they have no resource, no uh, blood cells, which is equivalent of the deer, just didn't hunt, then they are stressed and they reduce their reproductive rates and they delay reproduction to better times. So they maintain the disease too late. Uh, so basically it's the baby boom after the war. It is the, it's the whole year after a long day's work. It's the, it's the acknowledgement after the article. It is, it's like a cream tea after a long walk through a rainy Sunday afternoon. Something like that. <laughs> Good. Anyway, so the other thing is that, uh, so the transmission of reproductive state of the parasite is called gametocyte. And they are taken up by the mosquito. In the mosquito, the male gametocytes give rise to sperm, the female gametocytes give rise to egg cells, and then they do like, you know, their business. And they give rise to little baby parasites which are transmitted into the next host. Okay, I mean, this, this, uh, this, it's hard to find a human equivalent, but the, 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 what I could think of is basically you go into a plane, have sex in a plane, wait until your child is born, and then you leave it out at the holiday destination. <laughs> basically, the plane being the equivalent of the mosquito, the holiday destination being the equivalent of the host. I mean, it would have to be in a fucking damn long uh, plane, plane ride, because, I mean, because of the childbearing, not because of the sex, you know, because it, it must be because of the sex, would be pretty short, right? You know what I mean? For, for me, it would be from Luxembourg Airport to Luxembourg City or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, good, we've got that. Um, yeah, what did I want to say? <laughs> Semitocytes, transmission. Um, yeah, we did that. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, wait, 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 there was something more I wanted to say. Social interactions. Okay, social interactions! <laughs> Thank you! Thank you. So, again, okay. so social interactions. We had sex, we had stress, there's got to be some more sex, don't worry. Uh, social interactions. Yeah, parasites are very alone in the host. There's, um, uh, so basically, if, if one mosquito, there's seven mosquitoes biting one host, each one brings in a new parasite and so on, and there's a little bunch of parasites inside the host. And parasites, malaria parasites are able to recognize other parasites and they are also able to modify their behavior appropriately. And one thing they do is modify their sex ratios. Huh? So basically what happens inside a mosquito is one big gangbang. Sisters doing it with brothers and so on. So good, I ask you mates, what would be the perfect sex ratio if you were in a gangbang? Anyone? Yeah? Anyway, normally the answer is, yeah, loads of females. Yes, exactly. One male and seven it, loads of females. But now it's a tricky question. What would your parents think if they knew what would be the ideal sex ratio in a gang band? Well, if the, if the only brothers and sisters are doing it, actually, the parasite want to have a, a, max, a minimum amount of males to inseminate all the females, right? Because then this limits competition between the brother uh, between the two brothers and all these sisters can get children from you. I mean, yeah. I mean, this is some pretty fetish terrain. Incest gangbang. I really need to check you, Paul, uh, if I can find something like this. Oh, well, no internet. Fuck, yeah. Good. <laughs> Good. So, in short, Paris has do this. It's called Logan Mate Competition, and it's pretty, just pretty impressive, right? 
So just to, I want to draw attention to the new uh, political party I created, the Luxembourg Society for the Appreciation of Parasites, <laughs> short the LSAP. Uh, there's posters all over the place, uh, and I also ask you for, for all your votes, and thank you, that's it. Three, 
the red one, and this is really a new sound. So I have a string, it has its own sound, plus it makes another important sound, and, I, and you can always keep the string exactly the same point to find the same the new sound. So I have a new sound, I can tune the new string to this new sound. And then I can re repeat the procedure again. No? And so on, and so on. I can create always new sounds. How many of them? Is this process ever going to finish? Well, I think the answer is no. It will cover all the spectrum of possible sounds. But, in fact, after 12 repetitions, you get a sound which is almost exactly the one that you started with. The history of this almost is quite fascinating. It is the history of tuning. And I'm not going to talk about this, but... Uh, uh, well, you know, the wet tempered clavier by Johann Sebastian Bach was uh, to solve this problem of tuning. So I'm going to assume that after 12 repetitions we have 12 notes, and then I skip the next time, because actually we are not using all of them. What Schoenberg did, uh, and Weber and Bell, the game school, uh, they invented the cacophony, but they wanted to react to tradition to find something new. They used all the sounds, so they were creating, you know, after the cacophonic series and using them all equally. But the previous tradition did not use all of them, so we, are, we have to choose fewer sounds to make our tunes. What if we use six sounds? So this is 12 possible sounds, and we pick six. So, an interesting thing is that 12 can be divided by 6, and so it means that I can space these sounds regularly, okay? I can have exactly the same interval between these two of the sounds, and what, what you get is something like this. This is called the hexatonal scale, it's the one that has been used by Debussy, also to react to tradition, but it's not actually the scale that has been used in uh, traditional music. And exactly because it is too symmetrical. In fact, 12 is a very special number, and it was used also by Mesopotamia to count time. Basically, 60 seconds is just uh, 5 times 12. So. And uh, it's a very regular number. It can be divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. And the opposite of these numbers are 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So actually, only two numbers between 1 and 12 are left out, which are not in a relation of symmetry with respect to 12. And these numbers are 5 and 6. Yeah. 5 and 7, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 5 and 7 are the other magic numbers of, of all musical traditions. You find them in uh, Indian music, the raga, or, uh, the, uh, which are the scales that are used in Indian music, are composed of seven notes. Pentatonic scales in Bali, in Polynesian music, Russian music, Chinese, Arab, and Western Greek uh, music all have in common the fact that they choose seven or five tones out of twelve. And the reason is that you cannot, you cannot space them equally out of 12. You cannot make a regular succession. So what you get is something that will not be too regular. It will sound different. The problem with the exotonic scale is that it sounds always the same wherever you take it. Now, if you should sound play here. Now, this gets boring very soon, huh? because you don't, really, you don't have a, a reference frame. But if you use seven notes, you are obliged to have a reference frame, and you get scales that have a clear uh, system. For example, this is the minor scale. No, sorry. <laughs> you can have uh, you can have different scales with the. Uh, of seven notes, that they have significantly different uh, sound. For example, the, positive, the major scale. This is very different from the one before. Huh? And again, you, have, you can have uh, scales uh, like. Um, well, this is a, a Persian scale that has been used in Greece and in Turkey. Okay, this is a Persian tune that you will recognize in the 
this in partition, of course. So that's why we use seven and five. And now let's go to completely different numbers, but this time I'm not talking about music, I'm talking about poetry, and uh, actually Italian poetry, but I guess I uh, want to make the analog uh, in any language. Eleven, oh, okay, sorry. Eleven versus eight. The first uh, three lines are the incident of uh, La Divina Commedia, the Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri. Nel mezzo del cammino di nostra vita vi ritrovai per una selva oscura che la retta via la smarrita. So, uh, these verses are, have exactly 11 syllables, okay? And there I wrote the number of where the accent falls. In the first, falls at 2, 6, 10, and then it's, it always changes. It always changes the, where the accent is placed. The result is that this thing all, almost sounds like a prose, actually. Nel mezzo del cammino di nostra vita vi ritrovai per una selva oscura, che la retta via la smarrita. It doesn't really sound like a nursery uh, poem for children, like the second one, which is Andar a Gigi Coccolotre, cedete sul tono che faceva non amore, sono la figlia del dottore. This is based on eight syllable meter, and, it is, and because it is eight, it is so regular, it will always keep the same essence. You are induced to create a very mechanical poem. So again, in arts, symmetries have been broken on purpose because when you break symmetries, you get much more information, richness, variety, and less boring things. Yeah. So I'm a physicist, and I was supposed to talk about the cosmos. As a physicist, my idea would be to uh, make a theory of everything, including music, poetry, and the cosmos. Uh, well, what we're serving in physics is that uh, physical laws are highly symmetrical on their own, but the world that they generate is not symmetrical at all. For example, there are uh, symmetries in the laws of particles. There is an obvious symmetry in gravitation. It's a symmetry under rotation. The Newton law is uh, spherical, symmetric. But the orbits of planets are not spherical, symmetric. They are elliptic, which break the symmetry. This is already a manifestation of broken symmetry. And I myself study breaking symmetry in thermodynamics. In particular, I work with entropy. You might have heard that entropy is a measure of disorder. But uh, disorder to whom? This is my room, as my mother sees it on the left side, and as I see it, I know exactly where the things are. Yeah. So for me, it's very water, it's tidy. For my mother, it's just a mess. So for her, the entropy is very high, and for me, the entropy is, is, is very low. So we are already disagreeing on the very concept of entropy. Who is right? But this is an example of a broken symmetry that I study in thermodynamics. And that's it. Next time, we'll talk about physics. <laughs>
the Brazilian dance. Right. But don't forget, I'm not too late. We don't have. Here. Yeah, okay. Good, you teach. So, before we continue with our three remaining slammers, um, we have a little treat for you. And this treat will just show you how, let's say, multi-layered the life of a scientist can be. We are not just sitting in a dark room researching and trying to solve the mysteries of the world, but we do something else, we do something more. Like, for instance, sing and write our own songs. And I'm very honored to introduce Franz Konrad. You already met him. He's the guy with the great glasses and nice vest, and he just changed his, his time for the event. So I'm very glad to introduce Franz, who is going to sing two songs, one in Luxembourgish, one in French, to just show you that there is something else next to research and science. So please give a warm welcome to Franz Conrad. Yeah. Laura, you put this very, very nicely. Thank you, welcome. <laughs> so as she said, we all have some different personalities and science is not all. And um, I guess all of us have something else, be it artistic or, or whatever, sports or whatever. Does that mean? It's okay? It's meant to be so? <laughs> anyway, um, just... Put I do black. So. <laughs> we have many talents, right? <laughs> ok, donc je vais vous chanter deux chansons. La première, c'est en luxembourgeois. Euh, Peut-être que vous connaissez la situation. Many scientists come from abroad, they leave partners somewhere else in the world, and maybe they have to take the train to get back to them, or when they leave, they take the train. And that's the name of my of the first song. It's called Klamme dans den Zug, which means don't go on a train. Ne monte pas à train. So it's a love song, or leaving, the leaving song.
Alors, après, je fais la deuxième, la dernière chanson euh, sera en français. Euh, je suis d'avis que tout le monde travaille un peu trop. Euh, pas seulement les filles scientifiques. Euh, et en fait, cette chanson, cette chanson traite un peu ce thème-là. Elle euh, s'appelle Le Petit Écureuil, Petit Squirrel. Squirrel C'est right one So, yeah, which only profit de la vie, the petit girl profit de la vie, sans trop se faire les soucis, et peut-être qu'on peut apprendre quelque chose de désécuré. Ah oui, j'ai besoin d'un volontaire qui va jouer avec ça. Parce qu'il y a un petit zolo, une petite partie harmonica, et je ne peux pas le faire avec ce micro-là. C'est très facile. Il faut juste faire ça en fait. Sur la musique. Non, sur la musique. Tout est bien. Tout, tout, tous les sons sont bons. Personne Alors je vois. Fabian. By the way, Fabian plays the trumpet very, very well. He plays the brass band trumpet, so uh, it's good to have him here. Okay, so I give you a signal and then you turn start and I, if I say stop, you stop. Okay. <laughs> Je m'appelle, j'ai pas de nom, je suis bien né, je suis bien vivant, je suis ni grand, non plus très gros, je suis bien comme ça, ni moche ni beau, je suis bien comme ça, ni bon ni va, quand tout comme moi suffit pour moi, si douce, la vie est douce. J'ai pas grand chose à vous dire, préfère m'exprimer par les rires, le jaune qui chatouille le verre, les couleurs sont plus que les verts, la vie m'apporte des chansons plus mélodieuses. Que les chants, la vie chante des chansons. Disons qu'il ne faut pas grand chose, la vie est déjà assez rose pour être heureux tout à fait. C'est pour cela qu'on est fait, on est en meurt entre les deux. La vie est belle et même s'il peut les gouttes du ciel. Miraculeux, de toute façon on change rien. La terre est tourne, elle tournera. Les beautés restent, les beautés meurent. Je vis si long que pour mon cœur. Et surtout à chaque fin du jour, je me réjouis très bien. De voir le soleil se coucher dans le ciel, les couleurs jouer. Avec les lumières et les sangs Et puis de te déguster Une noix Avant de me coucher
going to be the first slammer of the second part, then the second one, then the third one. Don't worry, I will not stop dancing yet. It's all okay. I just wait for my co-host, who's taking care of his guitar. It's just a matter of seconds. Okay? We almost have it. So, still enjoying the evening? Just with personality, I need to wear this to be the moderator. Do it from the beginning. Huh? Do it from the beginning. This one, no, it takes too much time. I worked half an hour on it. Then it looks great. Thanks. <laughs> so, oh. okay, 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 good. Back in your official function, yeah? Okay, you take the mic, I draw? Yeah? But first we get music from yourself, please. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next spots. Three are left. Who will be first after the break? Okay. What if I. It's Boo! some sheet where they had to put some information about themselves in order to be able to present them. And Fu wrote under anything else you want us to add when we present to you. I just read it out loud, just the way it is. Our next speaker of tonight is Fu from Vietnam. He got his bachelor's degree in computer science from Hanoi University of Science and Technology, Vietnam. After that, he did a master also in the field of computer science at the Technical University of Eindhoven in the Netherlands. Since mid-September 2011... <laughs> <laughs> Still reading. Who has become a PhD candidate at the Security and Trust Research Center, SNT, of the University of Luxembourg. His research project is about software engineering for securing systems. Who is going to present his research activities in the form of a scientific poem, which is written in English, Luxembourgish French, and is presented in a Vietnamese poem singing style. Please join me to warmly welcome Who and his speech. My first uh, time attend uh, uh, science slam and also uh, the first time to be a slammer. But uh, yeah, I'm very glad to be here and, and I hope you, have, you all enjoy the evening. So welcome to my presentation. You know, okay, thanks for uh, first one. He introduced very nicely my name, Fu. Uh, you can call me Fu. It's okay. Just Fu. I'm fine, yeah, you can remember my, remember my name in that way, it's the perfect for me. <laughs> so, as a PhD candidate from the research center in uh, about security, uh, reliability and trust, I'm going to present you about my research in uh, software engineering for security. <coughs> Anyone here doesn't have a smartphone or doesn't use any computer or <laughs> live in the, in, the, in the country the, who, who doesn't have no computer at all? No? Okay. <laughs> So, okay, that last presentation is, uh, could be uh, yeah, suitable for you. Now, let's, let's find out what is IT security. Why do you bother? You know, your data, your information, your very sensitive data, your information, very valuable things, 
it's uh, very sensitive, but it's, uh, you have to you have to be aware of uh, that uh, data is the, is the, is possible to is, uh, to be uh, used for some something else that, <laughs> like this, for example. But what? So what, when you type you type security in Google, what do you see here? You see the that security guy? Oh, oh sorry. Uh, no. The security guy? No. Okay. You see the police? But what else do you see here? All about IT security, all related to computer. So now, is this the IT security is now equal to your security? Somehow. Not equal, but it is the make sense, right? Okay, about the hacker. You, you, you all heard about the hacker, about the, the one who tried to store your, your credit cards, for example, the, then you lost all your money. You heard about the Obama, but here Obama is not, uh, something related to cyber security. Okay? And uh, very recently, about uh, more than 300 million uh, USD lost in in uh, one day, and it's the kind of the, the biggest um, uh, bank robbery uh, in the in the history. That's why we are here in Luxembourg, in the, a country that uh, with many banks, uh, many uh, data center, and security for for IT is uh, very important. That's why we are working on the core project. And it's called uh, Meter, or you can call Miter. Or, but it's, uh, it's uh, about modeling, composing, and testing of security concerns. <laughs> and the idea is to have something very, very, um, very powerful. <laughs> and how I can, how I was thinking, how I, how I could uh, present my my research to the the very big audience. And how about that a poem? <laughs> a poem, and I try to write in in uh, three languages: uh, French, uh, Luxembourg, a bit, but uh, mainly in, in English, uh, of course, because uh, I, I manage to do my research in English. And uh, I, I can sing a bit the, the the poem. And actually, the structure of the poem is mimic the structure of a scientific uh, scientific paper, like the publication. So. Uh, the main part of all publication you have is uh, introducing the process evaluation, the conclusion. And maybe here somewhere the reference uh, acknowledgements, for example. <laughs> <laughs> now, the poem. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay. The first part, introduction. Security. Why to bother? Internet banking to the moon. <laughs> Smartphone is now a must. Facebook now use that for sure. <laughs> Moen, listen. Why security needed? What if said you lost your info? Credit card would have gone. Millions of arrows to be lost. Super kids know all the cost. But the circuit system must be in force. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Why? Not, not yet that circuit? Shushan. Stress? Change so quick? Business requirements change so quick? Time pressure of the development process. Time now to call for innovative sound methods for secure system to develop. <laughs> How about the MBS method? Modeling the security concern for the good. By the end of the security experts. In a way that they would have understood. <laughs> On the other hand, the business logic taken care by the business modeler. <laughs> this to be auto composed together. Secure system just one click further. 
border checking and testing to be leveraged on the security concern can be simulated to make sure the secure system accomplished for both security concern and decision making. <laughs> What's so good? He also for the code. The next time, computerize the most secure code as generated at no cost from the secure model that we got. <laughs> Why? Why MDS can be proof? So there's a sound method for the secure system to be developed. First, but no goes to the merit. That's all good. <laughs> Time breaks, so does not need the talk. Productivity, so is that we got new trend can be due to the song. The sun pick up away from world to go. Second, quality of the product, what would it be secure and good? Yes, of course, we can prove the secure system that a good buy model and chicken and testing that we do. And last but not least, the MDN system adaptive on the new trick to be dealt with. At one time they can be twisted And now we reach to the conclusion <laughs> In the more easy the world that we live The more secure system we all need And the SOS what are written For the secure system to be fit syntax and descriptive grammar and she wanted us to add anything else you want to add when we present you she said I am convinced that grammar can be fun <laughs> so um, the type of PhD type is Vorstellung Syntax von Haupt und Nebensätzen in Luxemburgischen Luxemburgischen uh, <laughs> and she added translation thank you very much sure. word order in Luxemburgish main and subordinate clauses she just got her PhD, 1st of July, so she's very new. And the title of her speech will be Lux Luxemburg Syntax, a Schuppe, wo steht. So, she goes take Also, bei den meisten Leuten, das geht wirklich schnell immer gut. Zum Beispiel, oder schnell geht man Konkurrenz nur gedurch. War das am Punkt Unterschied zwischen Prinzip Prog 
Oh, reflexiv. Keine Ahnung. Aber ich kann nicht so. Konkurrenz heißt einfach, dass ihr Satz funktioniert. Die hat ein kleines Basis, die können so ein, eine gute Sache. Die muss so eine gute Sache, für das Konkurrenz funktioniert. Was man nicht ist, geht sie poker reflexiv. Wenn ich so ein sie schlohe sich, dann ist es reziprok, was es sich gegenseitig schlohen. Aber wenn es reflexiv ist, sind es zwei Leute, die sich einfach selber schlohen. Noch nie übernommen durch Big <lacht> ähm, Ja, dann, also generell einfach Partizipasse. Okay, was Partizipasse für Bitzen? Geburt. Hat er dann einfach so gesagt, wenn er überhaupt keine Stress hat. Mehr, ich würde dich am Punkt nicht nerven, wenn man da gerade mehr da wieder zu uns bei den Mammensprachler, die machen meistens die perfekte Satz, aber die Erklärungen sind am allermannsten perfekt. Das seht ihr nicht. Ach, kein Lützel, wo ich, also ich und das noch nie hören. Da ist einfach ein bisschen das Problem an der Recherche. Alle Menschen meinen, ich weiß selber, das beste Lützel, wo ich. Mein Freund muss denken, ja, wie möchte ich in einem richtigen Baum geschlucken? Du kriegst ja lauter verschiedene Rezepte, und keiner sagt dir ja die eine, und alle Menschen meinen, dass sein Eiche das Beste ist. Also ein bisschen funktioniert auch an der Linguistik. Ähm, an der Linguistik ist einfach das Handwerksgeschirr ein bisschen schwierig. Das heißt, wir schwätzen über Spruch, wir so was Spruch kann, aber wie machen wir das? Mit der Spruch. Das heißt, wir holen das bloß, wir haben es selber zu erklären. Was das kleine Sachen, die klein sind? Super, etwas gelehrt? Nein. Du redest eigentlich ja ein. Ähm, Englische Linguist, also Psycholinguist, an denen ich denke, gesagt, Bees will never dance a bee dance about bee dance psychology. <lacht> <lacht> Aber machen wir, wir holen Spruch, wir erklären Spruch, was Spruch ist Phänomene, an dem es mal Spruch genutzt wird, aber wir müssen das sehen. Ähm, zu meinem Thema, Luxemburgisch Syntax, ich gucke, wo was steht. Ähm, I look uh, where what stands. Um, so it's word order variation in Luxembourgish. So this is what it's all about. That us voted us all is drum. Die Gesicht am Kontrastiven lässt sich erkennen, wo Deutschlandsvariation aufhängt. Und ich kann nicht so ein Verhältnis so behandelt ob. Und ähm, du fängst uns mal geduscht, schön los für alle, ich hoffe, wir sind wieder dabei. I hope you all brought your pen, because I have a little test for you, just to test your grammar skills. And uh, let's see how far everyone gets. I don't let you pen if you have nothing. No, just kidding, I'm going to sing a song. <laughs> <laughs> About Luxembourgish syntax. Um, it's a song by the Ärzte, and um, if you know it, then you're lucky. So, <laughs> um, I'm not a musician, I just have my tea egg filled with pepper. <laughs> I hope you can hear it, okay? Es schenke nun an der Schmarrn an der Wies. Von Hage von mir besetzt, ganz ohne Kamerskrieg, mit den ganz Varianten, da das fies. Lo hol de mal le Satz, a guck mal, wo er steht. Sujet, Objet, Verben, da das Warum es geht. Wie misst du subjantiv, an Feld zu genitiv. Was ich von sich reiße, von dem Aufrein, das liegt tief. Ich gucke, wo was steht. Wo was steht, was da steht. Lass mir die wieder ein, wo was steht. Ich weiß selber nicht, was lass, was ich gesehen mag, alle Sohn. Da mag ich mich schon nicht mehr, weil du also selbst bist drin. Faschiste Kasusmuster, auf Vielfalt Besetzung. Lohr und ich will ja ohne Satz, a gucke, was wo steht. Ein letzter Boy ist dran mehr, das aus, was wir so brauchen. Lohr und ich will ja ohne Satz, 
Theorie. Das wäre das Weiterbringen, Dialekt von der Mami. Als Spruch sie massiert, am Brauchen Theorie. Ein Glitzebeule Schramm mehr, das ist mein PhD. <lacht> So, that will be our last slam to Mars. They need some preparation time, so uh, let's get started. Start dancing. That's right, yeah. I definitely will tell you all they told me about themselves. So, don't be, don't be a bit. Uh, okay. Um, so it's Julia. Uh, Tekla and Sean. Hello. 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 Does it work? Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Um, Julia is from Schwerer in Germany. Tekla is from Lüneburg in Germany. And Sean is from Silver Spring, M D U S A. Let's say somewhere. Germany. <laughs> Not Germany. No. Not Germany. So my mistake. Yes, um, they are. They wrote me all what they are, have been doing. But I just read biotechnology, biotechnology, and systems biology. All the rest I didn't understand. So let's just say biotechnology. Um, the research fields are metabolic repair, enzymology, metabolomics, inflammation, and again, metabolomics, inflammation. <laughs> I think they will tell us what that is. They are all from the LCFB, the Luxembourg Center for Systems Biomedicine. I think it's in Belleville, right? Yes. yes. First bell. Uh, Julia is in her second year, Tekla in her fourth, and Sean just started. They represented English. Sorry, that's a bit uh, just packed, but. Uh, and their title is The Story of My Life as a PhD Student, Four Years in Ten Minutes. So, uh, <laughs> do you show us? That's all they told you. Julia! Um, we just wait. I just don't go on top. Then the music will get louder. I would like to tell you a story about Julia, a young student who wanted to change the world. She'd just gotten her master's degree, and she's motivated and excited on her first day as a PhD student. She has a new work contract in the lab of the prestigious scientist, the Right Honorable Dr. Dr. Mendy Professor Tekla, BBMS Diploma Math, PhD Esquire, <laughs> to work on researching the cause of brain cancer. Her professor just got a huge grant to study this research. So her project is very well funded. <laughs> she will have enough money to do whatever she needs to do in the lab. <laughs> to take whatever projects on she needs, to buy whatever supplies she needs, and to do with the money as she sees fit. <laughs> but of course, she needs the right equipment for her research before she starts. Her professor equips her with totally new equipment. A lab coat to protect her from the dangers of the lab. Gloves to protect her from very cold, dry ice and chemicals. Goggles to protect her eyes from whatever dangers are there. A computer so that she can do her analysis of her data. Papers, articles, and journals so that she can start her research and learn all there is to know about brain cancer. And of course, her project, which she needs to work on for the next three years. She first needs to study the current state of, of brain cancer research by reading many scientific papers. Only then can she figure out which experiments to perform so that she can answer her scientific questions. Julia has planned her experiments with care, and she knows exactly what to do to find the answers that she is looking for. 
She takes brain samples from healthy people and from cancer patients and runs different experiments on them to understand the main differences. To understand why brains with cancer don't work the same way as normal brains do. Her experiments go great. Her PI is very impressed with her good work. They are extremely happy with the results. Now, Julia has to go analyze the data so that she can make a story out of her research. <clears throat> Julia takes her computer and her raw data from the experiment and performs many different data manipulation steps and statistical analyses to uncover and highlight the important results she has found with her experiments. Her results are statistically significant. She has found a very important biomarker for cancer. This is a huge breakthrough for modern medicine. She will be able to publish an article in a high-ranking journal. Great job, Julia. Congratulations. Julia's excellent work and amazing new finding make her the pride of the lab. She wins an award for her amazing research and new discovery. <laughs> yeah, she has worked hard, learned a lot, and completed her PhD. Now it's time to celebrate. Break up the champagne. Congratulations, Dr. Julia. <laughs> contract to directly become a professor at the university. <laughs> she is now an expert on brain cancer, and she will have a long and prosperous scientific career with much success. Great job. <laughs> However, that isn't a true representation of the life that a PhD student really leads. <laughs> Let's rewind the clock, back to the beginning of Julia's journey and see how the reality of a researcher really is. <laughs> <laughs> Julia is still excited to start with her, but as she approaches her new job, she is nervous about her first day, and a little bit intimidated at the huge amount of work that lies ahead of her. She is also very afraid of meeting her PI, the Right Honorable Dr. Dr. Mendy, Professor Tekla B.V. M.S. Diploma Math, Ph.D. Esquire, <laughs> a very famous brain cancer scientist with a huge anonymous lab. <laughs> <laughs> Julia signs the same contract to start her Ph.D., and she has the same project. However, her project is not so well funded. Not nearly as well funded as the project in her previous life was. Uh, and in addition, she has to share her money with uh, the other projects and people in the lab. She gets the equipment left over from the last PhD student, <laughs> who mysteriously disappeared in her fifth year as a PhD <laughs> after a late night experiment involving mutant advice. <laughs> right from the beginning, she is feeling overwhelmed. Her professor has very high expectations of her, and there is a whole lot of work to do. Her project is not so clear, and she has to work out many different projects simultaneously. There is a lot for Julia to do. In the beginning, it is very hard for her to do it. There is not a whole lot of time for Julia to plan her experiments as well as she would like. As her PI keeps pressuring her with deadlines, other projects, as well as more grant applications to fund her experiments. There are many problems that occur with her experiments. The construction going on in the other building of the ship Samples. There are multiple sources of contamination that occur from unknown parts of the lab. <laughs> she has to repeat her experiments multiple times in order to get any sort of results that she can use. And even though, with all this pressure, all of the problems, 
she has to use the results she gets to analyze and see what comes out. Judy needs help analyzing her data. It's a whole lot of work. She has to learn R from scratch. She spends weeks with the textbook. Her computer is slow and full of viruses. As the last few consistent spent most of her time watching American Idol. <laughs> she turns to her colleagues and her boss for help, as well as having many late night data analysis sessions fueled by coffee and chocolate. Thank you. Coffee and chocolate. <laughs> so that she can finish her analysis before her deadline. After mid after many sleepless nights and extensive normalization of the data, she finds her results barely significant. However, her old computer is not working as well as she is. <laughs> Luckily, Julia is prepared. She's been backing up her data onto a USB stick every 10 minutes during her analysis. <laughs> the data is not lost, and Julia can still finish her project before her contract ends. Finally, she has made it. Julia has submitted her results in the best journal she could manage. <laughs> and a thesis committee has decided to give her the title of a PhD. Congratulations, Dr. Julia. <laughs> now it's time for her to get some well-deserved vacation. She's thinking about going somewhere warm where she can spend time in the sun, which she hasn't seen in a very long time. Maybe an island in the Caribbean, or the coast of Italy, <laughs> but that isn't going to happen anytime soon. The revisions have just come back from the paper she submitted. More experiments are needed before she can publish her results. Julia makes the necessary preparations for her next set of experiments. <laughs> and goes back to the lab to continue her work. Even with the immense pressure from her project and constant stress from her PI, Julia is able to remain relaxed and calm as she follows through with her experiments in the endless pursuit of knowledge that drives all scientists. <laughs> she finished her paper. We'd like to thank everybody who was involved with the writing of the uh, experiment, <laughs> including Jesus, <laughs> Tom, Egon, Anna, Fabian, and everybody else. Thank you very much for your attention. Do you have any questions? We prepared a lot, but <laughs> we used it all. <laughs> uh, here, this is yours. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot for all the chaos and so on. <laughs> Just take your time. So we're coming now to the voting. I explain the voting system. Donc on va voter pour le meilleur, la meilleure. C'est vous qui décidez. Um, you're just gonna applause. That's it. Okay? So the one who gets the most applause, or, yeah, I say applause. Um, plus d'applaudissements, il va gagner. So each of the six timers will vote forward. Uh, first, I like to get all the slammers back at stage. Please get up and please have a awesome
I'm happy that I don't have to vote because I wouldn't know what to vote for. <laughs> yes, but are you ready for your great moment? We have, yes, we have a guest of honor actually, the man who did it last year, who won the first science slam organized by Luxdog. Please give a warm welcome to Matthias. Because, now if we start with the first one and just go on, it might be a bit unfair because we remember the last one best because it was just now, okay? So I invented some system. We just draw again. Matthias can just take some name without looking. And these slammers or this slammer can go first to have the applause, okay? You understand? Okay. Then you applaud as much as you want and let's comment. Okay, let's go. Matteo. Matteo, first the musician. Thank you. Now the second one. Caroline. Caroline. Thank you. And Thank you. We are meeting Adriano. Adriano, the dancer. Philip! Philip! 
very difficult. Philip, I have to say, I would vote you because you're the well, you best dressed man. <laughs>
goes to the camera team from the university. We have four cameras here today, so uh, we will have a great video. <laughs> 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 Thank you.